Well, today's threat assessment is about a topic we have covered pretty extensively on the show, and that's specifically in education. Day after day, the liberal machine is bending the education system to conform with sometimes ridiculous ideologies, and we got to put a stop to it before it's too late. Virginia has long been a hotbed for the education wars between liberals and conservatives, and just recently, a school board in Fairfax County ratified a proposal which will combine male and female students for sex education curriculum. Instead of, obviously, separating these courses by gender, which had been the standard procedure for decades. But here's the most outrageous part. Over 2,500 parents were surveyed about this proposal. A whopping 84% of them rejected it. And what's even more, these same parents commented that they oppose teaching about gender ideology in those schools. In response to this overwhelming outrage and undeniable reaction from parents, Fairfax County Superintendent Michelle Reed had the audacity to say this, quite, or quote, honestly, the majority doesn't always dictate right. The sheer arrogance of these words is enough to make any parent who wants to put their kids first put their fists through a wall. That, my friends, is my problem with this entire movement that's being sung so loudly from the hills. The people who are the loudest are oftentimes the most unreasonable, disregarding personal beliefs, preferences, or even parental rights over our own children. Societal norms are what dictate the ebb and flow of successful nations. And to change these norms rapidly, mind you, based on a few very small but very loud minority, could destine a country for conflict and even failure. Well, joining me now is someone who may have a differing opinion on this subject, learning specialist Desmond Fambrini. Desmond, appreciate you coming on. Uh, I believe we, I, you know, I watched some of your, your interviews on Vice Media, and I believe we're on the separate side of this, but do you think that it has gone too far in our educational system today? So, well, first of all, I think you bring up a great question and great points, right? Um, and I think, first of all, I think we just need to validate that we are in a very polarized society where it seems like only the extremified opinions of both sides tend to get heard, right? Like you said, the loudest tend to be heard. But I do want to advocate that there may be a happy medium, right, or a happy median when it comes to when it comes to education, right? Is there a situation, for example, I would ask you, where there would be sex education that would start out separated by gender, but then have a couple lessons that would be gender inclusive? And, and would you say that that would be um, kind of like a bombastic difficulty, or would that be something that would, you would find more acceptable? Well, so actually, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I think that, you know, so, I'm a traditional guy. I think so, sometimes That's traditions are, are good. However, I, I'd have to ask the question back in order to determine my answer. How does this better serve our children? And in this case, I don't think it does to teach them together because that's the reason we're teaching it in the first place because they're going to get together anyway. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I appreciate that perspective, right? And I also appreciate your, you know, your idea from tradition, right? I went to Dartmouth College in, in New Hampshire, and we have a little saying there, lest the traditions fail, which means traditions are not necessarily bad unless they begin to fail us, right? Now, in my opinion, we may have a little bit of a failure when it comes to sex education, right? Because by separating by gender, of course, we want to keep it as appropriate as possible. I'm 100% for that. However, there's a certain... And I, you know, I don't. I will use this word kind of as kindly as possible. There's a certain obliviousness of mm -hmm. what the other gender is experiencing that I do find problematic as an educator. The fact that you know boys at the age of 12 or 13 have no idea what a period is is somewhat difficult, in my opinion. Now, do, do we need to directly go through the aisles with them and have them pick out different types of tampons and pads? No, I would say that's a little bit ridiculous. But would it be problematic for boys to simply know that that occurs? And of course, we can go the other direction and say, is it problematic for girls to know what sperm production is and how that actually, you know, works in the, the process of well, pregnancy? I would say no, both are important and, and both genders should know both sides of the equation. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I you know, disagree in the fact that like 13 year old oh, kids, I think that, you know, that's probably too young. And I think that this is something more for parents and less for the schools, which is, uh, you know, the, my broader point. And I want to play a soundbite from a journalist, uh, Anna Kasparian. And she's well known for her progressive beliefs. Here's what she said recently about gender ideology. It is a lie that puberty blockers are reversible. In some cases, they are not, <laughs> and they can cause irreparable harm. Withholding the information because you don't like the information getting out there ain't the way to go because that destroys any opportunity for us to actually have a good faith debate. 
Now, I, bring, I only bring this soundbite up because I think that one of the, the hot-button items that's, that's it, it's small, but it's happening very loudly, is the notion that these schools can prescribe puberty blockers or transitional um, um, things to, for, you know, for students without their parents' consent. Do you think that part of the movement may have gone too far after hearing that? Well, I would say, I would almost counter and say that that part of the movement is non-existent, right? Because now you're qualifying the difference between somebody like a learning specialist like me with a master's of education with somebody that has an MD, that's a doctor, right? I am a learning specialist and it is in no way my job to ever suggest to a child that they should be on any type of hormone blockers. That's a job for your endocrinologist, right? That's right. just simply... But, but schools are pushing for the power to be able to do that. Some schools. I would uh, well, absolutely. I'm sure, you know, and there are some schools that actually 100% push that. I'm sure there's some schools that push that ideology. But there's why? some schools that push that being gay is not okay whatsoever. And again, I think that, you know, like you said, sometimes the loudest people get heard when really I feel like if we just have a conversation and say, hey, let's not push puberty blockers and let's not do conversion camps. And I feel like you said there won't be a critical failure with our nation where everyone is extremely polarized. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. I watched some of your other videos and you had made a point actually, which I was like, oh, okay. Where you had said that, you know, you don't identify yourself in any specific group. You just teach kids. And that's true. look, I mean, you're, you're a man, you wear lipstick. Obviously to someone like me, that's not, I, I wouldn't do it. I, I don't consider it normal, but that's your thing. However, you made a point in that in that thing to say, like, I am who I am. I don't push it on my kids. I don't teach it. Why can't more of the movement be like that? Well, I can only speak for myself. And I think that I, first of all, appreciate that. And don't get it twisted. I think you'd look good in a nice, like, natural shade of no, lipstick. No, hard Sorry, pass. Excuse me. Hard don't, pass. Don't think I'm <laughs> only messing with you. I'm only messing with you. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, but as an educator, right? Um, I'm a learning specialist, specializing in language mm -hmm. processing disorders, ADHD, and autism. Nowhere there does it say anything about gender and gender ideology, period, right? So if parents hire me to teach their kids how to read, write, or do math, that is what I'm going to be doing, period. I'm in private practice, though. So I think that it's a very important conversation to have as far as, hey, what are you comfortable with your kids knowing? Where are your boundaries as a parent? Where are my boundaries as an educator, right? So, and, and let's see if I can actually make this a little bit more conflict oriented because mm -hmm. you and I are just getting along way too well, right? So I'll say, there's no way, you know, if a kid goes, oh, well, are you gay or straight or bi? That's not, a, that's not your business. That right. sexuality does not come in. Absolutely not. That is my sexuality. That is none of your business. And that, oh, I like what's your yeah. I, I didn't even, we're running out of time, but I, you know, like yeah. to, to your point, when I was in high school, I didn't even know my teachers existed outside of the building. So Absolutely. like, we're not supposed to, we don't, know. we don't, right? Well, we are, but we're not supposed to, right? Exactly. But with that said, you know, I, you know, like you said, I'm male. I do go by he, him, right? If a student comes in and says, oh, well, my, you know, my dad right. or my mom said that boys can't wear makeup. Right. I do feel a factual obligation to correct that. I could say, well, and perhaps, that's, yeah. Yeah, that, no, now, and I think me. that is that is actually, you know, like if that's the biggest sticking point, okay, I'd be happy right. to have that conversation. I happen to abide by that and agree with that. You don't, yeah. but you know what? No, okay. This is, okay, oh, but we're, I, Desmond, I got to stop you there because we are out of time, but I do appreciate you coming on and I do appreciate Absolutely. the openness of the conversation very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. Uh,